today we're talking about narcissism and sex and the way in which a narcissist perceives sex and it's important to understand because it can be so confusing when you first meet a narcissist to be love bombed and be swept up in such admiration and connection and then to suddenly feel or eventually feel left out in the cold so let's talk a little bit about what sex is to a narcissist sex to a narcissist is not about intimacy intimacy is about trust and vulnerability it's about seeing me naked and raw and trusting that as i am i can trust that you won't exploit me and that i am pleasing to you and that together we can experience a pleasurable experience that is based on mutual trust and respect i have no fear that after laying naked with you and being so vulnerable with you that you will exploit me now when we're dealing with the narcissist sex is not about intimacy or vulnerability sex is about admiration it's about domination it's about attention worship and even competition a narcissist wants to believe that you believe that they are the most exciting romantic sexual partner you have ever had they'll ask you about your past lovers how far did you go did you enjoy it and this is their attempt to compete with a past lover in your mind because what they want to believe is they need to believe that you see them as the best lover ever so don't forget that a narcissist needs a mirror in every relationship that a narcissist has is a mirror relationship in other words how you see the narcissist is very important to the narcissist so the goal is to manipulate your perception so you are able to reflect back a sense that the narcissist is the best so sex is not about partners it's not about pleasing you even though they may be able to please you sexually mechanically sex is not about pleasuring you it's about how the narcissist feels about how you feel about the narcissist you are a means to a source of narcissistic supply your pleasure allows a narcissist a reflection of their own greatness the greatness that they believe they are and they need to believe that you believe they are so there is this addictive quality to dominance and control for a narcissist and so the more a narcissist is able to dominate and control you through sex the more addictive they are to the sex and to dominance and control now A narcissist uses sex to lure you in. They will hook you with great sex and admiration and validation. They'll be charismatic. They'll make you feel like you are the most beautiful or the most incredible man on the face of the earth. Now, what will happen is in time, they'll begin to withdraw. And so they gave you a little bit of a drug and now all of a sudden they start taking it away. Now in that time that they've pulled away from you what they're doing is they're gauging just how addicted you are to them how long does it take you to acquiesce how long will it take you to text how long will it take you to beg to make up because you want the sex back so what they're doing is they're gauging just how addicted you are to them and how much control they actually have over you So remember that even your brain, your body and your mind can become addicted to hormones like oxytocin, oxytocin and dopamine as well through the trauma bond or the connection to the narcissist. Now, boundaries. In a sexual relationship with a narcissist, what you will notice is they will try to get you to push your boundaries. They want to know how far you've gone in the past and they want to see if they can push you if they can get you to do a threesome if they can get you to do 
um, something that you've never done before, right? And what this is, what they're doing is if they can get you to break that boundary, what's happening in their mind is that they have successfully won. Remember that you pushing your boundaries represents dominance and control over you. And this idea that they were able to get you to do something you've never done before. It's not about pleasing you. It's about controlling you. Seduction for a narcissist is about getting you to feel excited, which excites the narcissist and supplies them with a rush. Again, it's not about you. It's about your reaction. It's about what they think you think about them. Really important distinction. The narcissist will also get a rush from embarrassing you, maybe in front of other people, maybe sending you a dirty picture while you're sitting across from them at a family party, maybe even while you're dealing with the kids, while you're dealing with your mom. The narcissist loves to just throw these monkey wrenches into your life and hoping to get a thrill out of you, right? Um, Expect shallow eyes during sex with the narcissist. Expect them to feel and to behave in a distant way. If there, there are mirrors in the room, the narcissist will be observing himself or herself and observing your pleasure through the mirror rather than making eye contact with you. This is because they are disconnected from you emotionally. And this is an act. This is a means to an end. So they're doing their best to find what makes them happy. And that is the need to dominate and control you. And so during the sexual act, the narcissist, again, is going to be looking for mirrors. That's, I mean that figuratively, and I mean that literally. Narcissists use projection. So um, what they'll do is they will accuse you of having an affair, uh, having an affair, even though they're having the affair, right? So narcissists do want to don't do not want to be held down. So relationships are supposed to be basically a 50-50 sharing um, of responsibility, sharing of household duties, a marital agreement. But the marital agreement is actually very disruptive to the narcissist's psyche, which is why they so often resort to cheating, because they need to feel in control. So in order to satisfy that need for dominance, they go outside the marriage. Of course, they'll lie about it, which also allows them to feel dominant and in control, but they will feed their need to dominate and control through extramarital affairs through even money, moving your money around without you knowing it, buying stocks you don't know about, buying homes you don't know about, just having experiences outside the home that you know nothing about. Now, narcissists will punish you by withholding sex, right? So to punish you, they will refuse to have sex with you. They will seduce you, get you all riled up, and then have you anticipate having sex, and then suddenly pretend like, the flirting never happened. Like you're crazy. And they just leave you there, like questioning your own sanity, right? Or what they'll do is they will go through arousing you and find an excuse during the act to blame you for why they can't go through with it. So if you've ever been in a relationship with someone like this, even during the sexual experience, they'll find something to pick on you about And that's why they can't finish what they started. And it will be your fault. And you will lay there and think, what have I done? You will question your reality. And you may not realize if you're addicted to the narcissist through trauma bonding, what will happen is you will begin to crave this connection. And it will not be very difficult for you to even begin begging for this person to come back to bed with you please talk to me. Please tell me what I did wrong. Please, please, please. They're very good at messing with your head, right? They're very good at dominating and controlling you either through seduction or withholding of sex. Now, narcissists will also devalue you. Now, as the relationship begins to wane and the narcissist is 
growing bored of what's happening between the two of you. This is not your fault. This is what's happening in their mind. You may notice that they begin to devalue you. So um, if the narcissist begins to lose interest, for example, they don't feel the highs coming through the relationship. And um, they will begin to blame you. They will begin to insult you. They will begin to make fun of your body. They will be soon um, devaluing your sexual experiences in the past, blaming you for not wanting to do this, blaming you for not wanting to do that. It will be a total projection of their inability to maintain an intimate relationship over the long run. And because they're in it for the high, they're in it for the reflection, they're in it for the dominance. As that begins to wane in a serious relationship, don't be surprised if you begin to feel devalued sexually. So when it comes to dealing with the narcissist, whether we're dealing with them in the boardroom or the bedroom or the kitchen or the den or in the street or at the grocery store, what you will notice is a theme of needing to control your perception of them. And they need to believe that they are able to either bully you or seduce you into being afraid of them or craving them. And these are distinctions that we need to really be aware of in our relationships. And if you've ever been in a relationship with a narcissist, you have undoubtedly had somebody who wanted to dominate you, who wanted to bully you past your boundaries, who blamed you, who withheld sex from you, who used seduction as a key to pull you in, to lure you in, and to trauma bond you. Really good. There's a quote out there that says that we never see the hook. We always see the bait. And narcissists are very skilled. They know what bait to use. And so a female narcissist that is perhaps a boss or a manager will be a bully when it comes to other females. That's the way the dominance will play out. In a relationship with a man, a female narcissist will make this man believe that he is absolutely everything that she's ever wanted in a man. She's never had a better lover. And she will make him feel like he is the king of the world. But what she's really looking for is a reflection that says something like, you are the most amazing woman any man could ever have, and I'm so lucky to have you. So the hook for a female narcissist in a relationship is that reflection. And in time, as a female narcissist weans from the relationship, she will grow bored of this man. And as this man's feelings for her begin to deepen, she will grow even more distant and more incapable of meeting this man where he is. And this is the way the relationship plays out. When it comes to a male narcissist, a male narcissist in a work environment will bully, dominate other males in the workplace and other females as well. And female narcissists too will dominate males in the workplace. It goes hand in hand. In the bedroom, a narcissistic man will seduce even a married woman all the more better. You know, it's about competition, luring her away from her happy home and her children and her responsibilities. The more that he can pull her away from the things that she was attached to, the greater he feels about himself. There is great trauma bonding that happens through the sexual experience, through love bombing, and through the pushing of the boundaries. And it can take many months for someone who has been wrapped up in the sexual relationship with a narcissistic man to realize what's going on. I've had clients who have left their husbands, left their children, moved to another state, believing that this narcissist was everything she's ever hoped for. The narcissist went through the trouble of believing and solidifying this idea in my client's mind. And eventually, the client realizes that the narcissist is having multiple affairs and she has become completely financially dependent upon him, which soothes and satisfies the narcissist's need for dominance and control over another human being. The control over another, the dominance over another, whether it's financial dominance, sexual dominance, 
and what have you is our forms of narcissistic supply. I think it's very important that we be willing to look at ourselves and to observe our patterns in relationships. I think self-inquiry is absolutely essential if we are to evolve, if we are to grow emotionally, spiritually, cognitively, and behaviorally, because something has to change. If these are the types of personalities that we are manifesting, something must change. The narcissists of the world, or those with high narcissistic traits, are not going to change. We must change. And we cannot change without identifying the problem. We can never hope to identify a solution without identifying the problem. And so if you've come from a dysfunctional home, if you have suffered abandonment trauma, if you acknowledge codependency symptoms, then you are a target for narcissistic abuse. If you are someone who has tremendous empathy for others, if you are someone who tends to give others the benefit of the doubt, you are someone who may be hooked by a narcissist. If you are highly forgiving, if you tend to forgive others and give others repeated chances to make up for what they've done wrong in your life, if you lack boundaries, this is a warning to you. And it comes from a place of love. If you are someone who lacks boundaries and who doesn't feel good enough, you absolutely need to work on yourself so that you are less of a target for these predator personalities. Because those of you and those of us who feel high empathy, who are highly forgiving, who are afraid to set boundaries, who fear what other people think, who have been raised to cater to the needs of others, we are prey. We are prey. In this matrix, we are prey. Just like in the animal kingdom, there are hawks and there are bunny rabbits. And just like in the human kingdom, there are predator personalities and there are those of us who exhibit prey personalities. And it is very wise to know who and what you are. If you recognize yourself as prey, you must be aware that there are predators out there in this world. But that is not the end of the story. You can become so strong internally, so in love with yourself, that you can become a predator repellent. Self-love and boundaries are narcissistic. They are repellents to a narcissist. And so take the time to heal childhood trauma. Take the time to heal codependent behaviors. Take the time to fall in love with the self. Learn how to set boundaries. Learn how to enforce boundaries. Learn that it is totally fine to live by yourself if you have to. It is better to live without a rattlesnake in your bed than to learn to have to live with one in your bed. Namaste, dear ones. Be safe out there. Until next time. Bye for now. check out the next video and don't forget to click the link below so you can take the codependency quiz. We have to recognize that as codependents what we're doing is we lack a healthy sense and a healthy identity so what we do is we think that we can gain a we can gain validation or acceptance by taking care of other people.